Hi and welcome to another repaint video. I have no idea what to say about this one. It is more cool than cute and I know we like the cute stuff. I still loved making her and I hope you'll enjoy watching the process. No regrets, maybe a little bit. I missed out on making Puss in Boots. I am so sorry. This was a golden opportunity that I missed. I have written it down though for future ideas, so it will probably happen in the future. Instead, I made a cool steampunk cyborg with handmade shoes that I want in my own size. Well, we'll get to that. I had the overall concept ready and everything, but 80% were spur of the moment decisions. I just wanted a lot of tiny details. So this is my third doll in the series, next I'm making the battleship, I can't contain myself anymore, it's going to have an article theme, maybe some hints of pirates and sea creatures, oh boy. I'm a sad excuse for a secretive person, I, I can keep secrets, as long as they're not my own. Make sure to subscribe for future videos though, I've got three tokens left, the battleship, the iron and the cannon. I think it will be awesome, I've got the concepts and bad puns ready and everything. I've decided to make one extra token at the end, I'll keep that a secret though. Then, when they're all finished and I've taken group photos, I will put them up on Etsy. It will take another 8 weeks from posting this until that happens though, so no rush. I like this illustration, I framed her with thicker lines, which makes it a bit cartoonish. Me like. For this custom I used Gigi Grant, it's been a while since I repainted Gigi, there was no other reason for me to use her as a base. As usual I heat the head with my blow dryer before detaching it, then I cut the hair off close to the scalp before scraping the rests out with a flat screwdriver. Then I had to use a pair of pliers to take the remnants out. Usually I just cut the head open to save time and muscle wear, but I wanted to do some head shrinking this time. Before the acetone bath I cleaned the paint off, creating a blank canvas to work on. A bright pink blank canvas, but yeah, still. I fill a jar with acetone and dunk the head in. The jar has to be big enough for the head to expand in peace. Then I close it, I consume an enormous amount of peanut butter and the jar was perfect with this. After two hours I ruined everything. It fell apart. Please don't do like me. On the second try with another head that I happen to have in store, I only let it in for one and a half hours, two times with 24 hours in between. This time I tilted a jar and was extremely careful not to rip it to shreds. The head will shrink and so will the hole for the neck, so I cut a finger off a latex glove and used that to shield the plastic from the acetone, then I put the head back on before the final 24 hour drying. That way it will still fit, but if you do this, keep it on for at least 24 more hours. I'd say it made a difference. To remove the tattoo on her chest, I first buff most of it away with sandpaper, then I use more acetone and lightly rub it off, then I moved on to making the pattern for the mask. I wanted it to be shoe inspired, so I sketched it like a boot. First I glued paper on the face since I tried to sculpt the mask, but then I changed my mind, so it was useless. Please ignore it. Here are the pattern pieces, then I transferred and sewed the mask from fall leather. Finally I glued some straps on and the base was finished. To make the goggles I used UV resin. Thank you for this comment, I had no idea about air messing with the curing. I used another piece of plastic to cover both sides before I cured and it worked wonders. No stickiness left, then I could just peel it off and cut the excess. Now I want to make a bunch of glasses, her familiar is getting a pair of goggles at least. Then I glued leather onto them before I glued them onto the mask. As tiny decorations I made these little magnifying spectacle things. I used earring hooks because I'll never use them for what they're intended. And this is what I came up with. Then I used clear nail polish to make the glasses. I also used nail polish on the goggles to make them shiny. This is pretty cool. I found no eyelets small enough, so I made like 50 of them out of nail art studs. This is kind of my definition of insanity, but while watching a good movie you can basically do any monotonous thing and not even notice it. Tiny eyelet! And I lost it, well damn. I had to make a lot of them anyway, then I glued them on the mask before sewing the lacing. Small mask, and it has the cutest profile, and it kind of looks like a shoe if you know what to search for. 
Now I can start on the face up though. I've sealed the head with Mr. Super Clear matte varnish, leave it overnight just in case and then start drawing the outlines of the eyes and putting down the base. I also do some eyebrows. The thing with shrinking the head is that it makes the vinyl harder and the pencils are much easier to get opaque. It's a good thing, but I have only done one shrunken head before and I'm not used to it, so I had to erase a lot, use a q-tip to smoothen the eyes out and so forth. I decided to make the left eye robotic with a red glowing center, the other iris I made blue to contrast the super pink skin color. She got some blushing, some colors to the lips and highlighting before the next layer. On the second layer I enhance colors. I am drawing little details and such. I don't know if it's noticeable, but I've added some timestamps to this video. So if you want to see a special part of the process, for example the mask or shoes, it should be easier to find it. I hope it's helpful. On the third layer she gets some freckles and imperfections, I mix pastels with some water and dab it on, erasing some spots. I can't be the only one who has a bunch of these little ones, I can't draw with them, but since they're watercolor pencils I can still use them as watercolors, I just activate them with water and paint. Then it's time for the fourth layer. Here you can see that the head is turning pretty glossy. I don't know if I didn't wait long enough for the acetone to evaporate before starting the face up, but this was the last layer I could do with pastels. I tried spraying with MSC two times before I gave up after this and instead airbrushed with Liquitex matte varnish before the fifth layer. It worked like a charm. Here I used all of my Colira paints to make the different gold gears. And there we have it! Time for some hair! I wanted it to contrast the pink on the doll since all the accessories are brown and black, so I made wefts out of this fabulous blue acrylic yarn. Same procedure as always. I also wanted to give her a fancy undercut, so I cut yarn and made some flocking out of it, painting the scalp a color as close to the yarn as possible and then glued the flocking onto it. To make the flocking as natural as possible I go over it with my vacuum cleaner, but I cover the nozzle with a piece of fabric to not waste it. The wefts have dried and I can start with a hairstyle. First I peel them off and then cut off the excess. Next I marked out where to put the pigtails and glued all the wefts facing those dots. It was tricky and took some patience. At the final rows I glued the wefts facing away from the pigtails and after drying I flipped them over and tied them. I wasn't sure how to do the hairstyle, but decided on two buns. Next is shoes. This was my first attempt at making proper shoes and I loved it. First you cover the feet with foil and add some foil to the toes, then glue tissue paper on top of that. I followed this instruction, I might have deviated from it a bit, but I recommend it. To create a pattern I tape masking tape on top of it, then mark the seams and cut it out. Don't do this on a doll you care about, I have this scrap body that has loose hip joints and bad bleach damage. I am not doing this on my repainted Gigi Grant. After cutting the pieces out, I glue the tongue and vamp. There we go, looks rather cute. The rest of the shoes I sewed using the pattern I made. Next time I'll add some fancy lining, but I didn't want them too thick.
With the fabric finished, I made the soles. I used epoxy clay and did it in two parts. First the base with a piece of toothpick for the heel and then the heel itself. I love that profile. Finally, I cut off a piece of the toothpick. Then I cut the paper base to take it off the foot. After taking it off, I took out all the foil. I trimmed off the paper and added all the 36 tiny handmade eyelids. Then I sanded the sole, preparing for the acrylics. While that dried, I took the opportunity of adding some gutta to the edges. Then I let it dry overnight before adding a coat of clear nail polish. Shoes are done and I want human sized ones, but you know, we can't have everything. I sewed them directly onto the feet, you can take them off, but it is not recommended. This was a pain. <laughs> I need smaller hands. I wanted a long leather coat for her, so I modified a pattern by Gigi Requiem. It's the same one I used for the Jupiter collaboration. I used a ton of super glue, well, at least one tube. The pattern might seem super crazy, but it's not that bad. I did, however, cut out the wrong pieces two times. The second time I was on the verge of throwing it out the window, instead I lay down and cried silently like a good grown-up. Then I decided to add some pretty fur lining with more super glue. There we go, that's done! The skirt was pretty straightforward, I just used a basic pattern and added lace and some organza, I, I think that's what it's called, anyway, it looks kind of pirate-ish. For the top, I made a pattern for some type of bra, I added some tiny details to it, again, lots of super glue. From here on, until the custom stand, I made some random tiny details. First, I made a couple of gear molds out of hot glue. This I learned from Kiro's workshop and his Ice Woman video. It's such a quick and simple alternative to making a silicone mold. I dust the mold with shiny eyeshadow. Next I will airbrush the gears with gold paint, but this gives them different shades of gold. Plus it helps with the demolding. Then I used UV resin to make them. I also made some shoehorns and this weird looking thing that has nothing to do with anything. The handle is all wrong in the end, otherwise it could have been leather craft tool, but now that I'm looking at it, I mean it looks nice, but random. I used leather brown acrylic by the Arme Painter and painted the white fabric parts on the mask. Then I was inspired by an ad on Instagram and made little finger armor out of epoxy clay. To make it look jointed, I added tiny bead things to the sides. Here I added some things to the coat, yup, if not for the handle, this could go as a leather knife, it still looks awesome. Then I used black acrylics to dull the leather a bit, make it look more worn. The hair looked a bit flat and boring, so I used some dark blue pastels at the roots, then I aged the gears, this makes a big difference. I added the shoehorns to the sides of the shoes, some tiny buckles, and then I made a stand. I used these shoes and an ink pad to make footprints. Then I cut the board out, added some dirt with black pastels and sealed it up with glue. This way the resin won't ruin the paper and make it all blotchy. I also added some iridescent foil to the footprints, just for fun. Then, while that dried, I made the base of the base. This is a fast curing white resin and it smells so good. I don't know if that's a good thing though. You mix A and B in equal parts and then stir it until it's clear. This is sped up seven times, by the way. Then pour and let it cure. 
It's now the morning after and I cut the board out, then I glue the backside and put it on the base. After some drying, I drill a hole and glue the wire into it, as usual it's a wire from an old notebook. Then I use this clear resin where you mix 2 to 1, it's a bit tricky and I need a more precise scale, but it's okay for now. Don't do it like me, use alcohol spray instead or something, I use many matches and that's what I have at home, but next time I'll try using alcohol and warming the resin before mixing. After demolding I cut the edges and sand them down a bit. Then I glaze it with another layer of clear resin. After that has cured, I made this plushy circle out of cardboard and fabric, then I glued it at the bottom. Finally, I bend the wire into a saddle-like shape. Final testing. The good thing is that I can bend the wire so it fits the posing, so if you want her to have bent knees or something, or standing up straight, one can just adjust it pretty freely. She's finished and I named her Doc Martens. I imagine her like BT in Hunger Games, very tech-savvy, she can make something out of nothing, setting traps and outsmarting her opponents, seeing patterns, you know. Somehow, this is starting to look like a bunch of really cool game characters. I like it though. Next, I'm making the battleship. It will be cool because I've never done a nautical theme. I bet there are many miniature possibilities inside that concept. Speaking about nothing in particular, I would like to thank my Patreons, thank you so much. The Familiar will be up this weekend and I hope you like him. For people who want their own Familiar, I have added a listing in my Etsy. I can't make them without some sort of attachment to someone, so far they are attached to my dolls, but you know, why not humans? Head over to Etsy if you want to custom order your own Familiar. So this is what I started with and this is the result. Doc Martins. Not to be confused with Doc Martens. So freaking cool. I got to try a bunch of new stuff again. My favorite part is still the shoes or maybe the mask. But the coat is also really nice. I don't know. I'm glad I finally managed to create a steampunk doll that I am happy about. I hope you enjoyed watching the process. Feedback on my videos is it's always welcome and appreciated, especially from a viewer's standpoint. I hope you're having a nice day or evening, depending on when you're watching this, and yeah, until next time, bye!